Welcome to Touching the Ozarks, the weekly television broadcast ministry of Ozark Full Gospel Church, featuring the Bible teaching of Pastor James Akins. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned as we get ready to hear another message from God's exciting word. Jesus said, when I die for the world, I'm going to the tomb and I'm going to get up from the grave and I'm going to offer salvation to the whole world. And I want you to know for the Christian, the best is yet to come. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have three exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful Bible preaching at every service, and we never close for any reason. In addition, be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of our upcoming events and most current information. We look forward to seeing you soon, right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
We want to look at this in a very special way. Jesus Christ gave us three good cheers. And um, the first good cheer is the good cheer of forgiveness. And we need to understand, and I'm talking about uh, be of good cheer. So if you came in here tonight like a sour push, you need to get over that. Let the sugar of God's word sweeten up your drink. But anyway, it says in verse two, and behold, they brought to Jesus a man sick of palsy. And he was laying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. This is the good cheer when it's all clear. You know, you can never really have good cheer until it's all clear. We need our life cleaned up and we need the Spirit of God moving in our heart. You know, there's a lot of things in the world that deceive us. But one thing we need to understand is as long as there's sin in our life, we cannot really have true good cheer. Or we might have some intoxication, we might have some pleasures and some things of that nature. But really, if you're gonna have a good cheer from Jesus Christ, it needs to be declared it's all clear. They brought a man that was sick to Jesus Christ, sick of palsy, and uh, he was in horrible shape. And they even busted up the roof to get this sick man down to the feet of Jesus because the house was so full that they couldn't get in to where Jesus was with their sick friend. They carried their sick friend to the house and when they couldn't get in, the scripture says they went up on the roof, they broke the tiling of the roof and they lowered their sick of palsy down to the feet of Jesus. And Jesus Christ said, son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, I'm sure that the four men that were looking down through the hole where the, their friend was lowered said to themselves, we didn't bring him for that. We brought him for physical healing. And it's very clear that they did bring this man to Jesus for physical healing. But we need to understand that you can be sick physically and still go to heaven. But you cannot be sick in your spirit full of sin and go to heaven. And this man's greatest need was not physical healing. Just as your greatest need is not physical healing. Just as your greatest need is not money. Just as your greatest need is not material things. Your greatest need, my greatest need, is the good cheer of forgiveness. When we can say the good cheer, it's all clear. You know, it's amazing when Jesus Christ said to this sick of palsy, son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Um, I'm sure that the people didn't see any evidence at all that something miraculous took place. But I promise you the man on the stretcher that had palsy, a flood washed across his soul because he could hear the words, good cheer, it's all clear. Your sins are forgiven. You're okay. You're ready to face whatever tomorrow brings your way because your sins are forgiven. I am grateful for the fact that Jesus Christ has come to forgive us of our sins. And of course, we have only but to come to him and be honest with him and be really pointed with him and understand that we need salvation through the blood of the lamb. And when Jesus Christ said, son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiving thee. He just simply meant that it was the good cheer forgiveness or good cheer, it's all clear. I'm glad tonight I can tell you because of Jesus, it's all clear in my life. And I trust that as a Christian, you can say too, it's all clear in my life. I got a drink from the living water that changed my life forever. That's the first drink that everyone in this room needs to drink of, needs to drink all of it, the cup of salvation. Need to drink all of it, that refreshing drink that you can say when you're done, it's all clear. My conscience is purged, my heart is clean, it's all clear, my sins are forgiven. Isn't that beautiful? I am grateful for the fact that when Jesus Christ said to this man, thy sins be forgiven thee. Then he said to the sick of palsy, then get up, take up your bed and walk. 
and he was instantly healed physically of his sickness. But I think it goes without saying. The greatest need in man's life is not material or a robust body or finances or riches or a new car, a new house. The greatest need in every man's life and woman's life is that it's all clear. When we stand before God, we want it all clear. We don't want any muddy waters in our life. We want it to be clear. Amen? Now, the second good cheer, and I'm not going to keep you long, uh, but the second drink I want us to drink is found in Matthew chapter 14, and it's found in verse 27. I call it the good cheer when you row, row, row your boat. How many know there's a song that says, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. But the truth is, Life is not a dream. Life without Jesus Christ is a nightmare. And the truth is we're not gradually coasting downstream. The floodwaters are coming, the floodwaters of despair, the floodwaters of hard time. We have to fight in this world to just keep our heads above the water. We have to fight hard, keep a job, pay the bills, take care of things in the, in the family, take care of things in one's life. It's, it's not easy. It's not merely, merely life is but a dream. It's row, 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 row your boat. And many times it's rowing it against the waves, against the stream, against the raging waters. In fact, most of my life is not coasting gently down the stream. Most of my life is row, 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 row my boat trying to get upstream, trying to get ahead, trying to make it. And Jesus Christ came to the disciples when they were in the middle of rowing. In fact, um, it tells us that in Mark chapter 6, verse 48, the same account, when Jesus came to them, that the wind was contrary. They were, they were fighting the waves. In fact, it says they were toiling, and the wind was contrary to them. How many know life has a lot of contrary things? I've even met some contrary people, contrary people. I may know what I'm talking about. The Bible says you're supposed to live with all men peaceably, if at all possible. I may know sometimes that's almost impossible. It's almost impossible to feel peace when life is always having its upsets. I'm convinced that everybody in this room, you, you, you struggle, and, and many times you toil, and you row, and you row against the wind. The wind is contrary. Life is not always easy. But Jesus come walking to them, on the water, in the middle of the darkest time, the fourth watch, and Jesus came walking them, to them on the Sea of Galilee, and the wind was contrary, they were discouraged, they were much perplexed, and Jesus Christ shouted out in verse 27, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Now, I want you to understand something that's very important. You'll never be happy trying to survive without yielding to the Holy Spirit of God. You'll never be victorious. You'll never have happy life. You'll never have joy unspeakable as long as you're trying to get ahead without help from above. A prayerless life is a life that's trying to do it on their own energy, your own strength. And Jesus Christ comes to them in the middle of the storm, the wind's contrary, and he says, be of good cheer, desire, be not afraid. Jesus Christ is saying to them in the middle of this, row, row, row your boat. He's saying, be of good cheer. And Jesus Christ is saying to them, I am with you. In the middle of your struggles, in the middle of your perplexity, God wants to be with you. In fact, it says in the sixth chapter that Jesus would have walked past them. He would have just went on past and I want you to know Jesus will just walk on past in your life if you don't reach out to him. If you don't welcome him in your life, he'll just, he'll just walk past you. And you'll go through all the troubles of life. You'll go through all the storms of life. But I want you to know if you will acknowledge Christ, if you will look to Jesus Christ, he is with us. His hope is with us. His word is with us. 
His good cheer is with us. His presence is with us. He is truly Emmanuel, God with us. So let me say to you, and let me say to myself, sometimes I need just a good old drink of God's promise. I can't try to get through life without his strength. You know, you fight and you, you battle the waves and you try to get through, you try to make a living. Honestly, life is hard. Are you hearing me? Life is hard. If you don't believe life is hard, then you need to understand something very clearly. If you don't understand life is hard, you're deceived into thinking you're okay. But life is hard. And you, you've got to come to Christ in order to achieve in life. You need to take his yoke upon you. You know, you take a yoke. Jesus Christ said, uh, come unto me and all you that labor and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. A yoke is used to put together two dumb animals that can pull together. Only Jesus isn't the dumb animal. You and I are. We hook up with Jesus. Notice he does not say that Jesus, Jesus does not say I'm going to do it all. He just says, put a yoke on, join with me, and we'll pull together. We'll win the battle together. We'll achieve together. And when you're row, row, row in your boat and it's not gently down the stream, you're fighting. The waves are contrary. I want you to know Jesus Christ is with you. He'll be with you. He'll help you through every circumstance if you will let him. But if you don't let him, he will walk past you. He will go by you. He'll blow by you. And I always want him in my life. Amen. How many want him in your life? Amen. Now, God gives us another good cheer. And it's found in John 16, the last verse, verse 33. Here's another drink of good cheer. The first good cheer is Matthew 9, 2. The good cheer of forgiveness. The good cheer of all is clear. In Matthew chapter 14, the good cheer of no fear. The good cheer, I'll be with you. I'll help you. I'll strengthen you. I'll be there for you. If you'll just let me in, if you'll just let me be a part of your life, I'll make life sweet and precious. Then, the last one I, point out, I want to point out is God gives us a good cheer through his son, Jesus Christ. Notice in verse 33 of, of John 16, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. This is a good cheer of victory. Let me just put it like this. Good cheer when it's downright messy. How many know sometimes it's just downright messy? Hello? Amen. Sometimes life just gets downright messy. But Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer. In the world, you will have tribulation. You shall have tribulation. In the world, there will be high waters. In the world, there will be tsunamis. In the world, there will be storms. In the world, there will be pressure. In the world, there will be trials. In the world, there will be things that's coming against you to tear you down. But Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer. Shout. Praise God. Because Jesus Christ said, I have overcome the world. And Jesus Christ is the master mess up, clean up. He cleans up, amen. Jesus is the master of cleaning up messes. We, we try to clean up messes and it's just worse, amen. A few weeks back, one of my grandchildren, I don't know which one, it doesn't matter because all, all babies can get messy, even adults. Even Judy gets messy once in a while. I get messy once in a while, amen. Judy saying, leave me out of this. <laughs> but one of, one of the grandbabies, I don't remember which one, spilt some, some stuff on the floor, liquid. I don't know whether it's Kool-Aid or milk or something. Anyway, it might have been soy milk. or I don't know what it was. But then he tried to clean it up. <laughs> messy. I said messy. 
He made a bigger mess trying to clean it up if he'd have just left it alone. And so many times we try to clean up our own life and you're going to make a bigger mess. You need to leave it alone. You let, need to let Jesus take that mess and clean it up. In the world you shall have tribulation. It will be messy, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, Jesus Christ said. We need to understand that Jesus Christ said, I have overcome the world. When it's messy, don't you worry about it. When it's, when it's dark and, and, and hellish, don't worry about it. Because Jesus Christ is bigger than your mess. He's more powerful than your mess. He's more sovereign and glorious than your mistakes. He's more loving than your hate. He's more uplifting than your down, lower despair. Jesus Christ is enough. He's more than enough. He can lift you up because he said, in the world, you shall have tribulation, but be a good cheer. I went to that messy cross. I went to that place of death. I went to that messy tomb. I went to that place of death, that place of separation. I went to that place of suffering on the cross of Calvary. I went to that blood bath and that suffering, suffering upon the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ, I went there and it was a bloody mess. I went there and it was a mess. But I want you to know, in the mess, there's victory. In the mess, there's victory. You may be going through something right now. Maybe it's a financial mess. Maybe it's a physical mess. Maybe it's a, a, a relationship mess. Maybe it's a mess in your life and you're just not happy and there's just things going on in your mind that you're struggling with. It's a mess. I want you to know that Jesus Christ said, you need, you need to start out by smiling real big. You need to start out by being a good cheer. He said, in the world you shall have trouble, tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus Christ said, I have overcome the world. And you know how he overcome the world? He died on the cross of Calvary. The greatest attack on mankind is death. The greatest force against man is death. And Jesus Christ took death on the cross. He took our death. He was baptized in his own blood so that he could baptize us in his own love and blood and glory. Jesus Christ died on that cross. He was graveyard dead. They took his lifeless body down from the cross. It was a mess. Those disciples saw it. It was a mess. There was blood everywhere. The Messiah was dead. The one that raised the dead, the one that cleansed the leper, the one that walked in the water is dead. And they took him and carried him to the tomb. And they took about 100 pounds of spikenard and uh, uh, Nicodemus and, and um, uh, the Joseph of Arimathea, about 100 pounds of spikenard to put him in the tomb. And there they took him and put him in the tomb. The women were going to come and put spices on him, but it was going to be the Sabbath, so they couldn't come. And the very next morning, they showed up Sunday morning with their spices, and they discovered we're not going to get to put no spices on the Son of God because he's not there. He has risen from the tomb. He's the resurrected Son of God. He is not here, but he has risen. Why? Because that mess of the graveyard, Jesus conquered. That mess of death, Jesus conquered. That mess of despair, Jesus conquered. That mess that you're in today, Jesus has conquered. And there's nothing that you face in life today that Jesus Christ can't give you victory. Victory. Amen. 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 Life is hard. And, you know, I, I thought it would take longer to get as old as I am. Now, some of you are young in here and you think you've got plenty of time. You don't. You're on a, you're on a speeding bus with no brakes. You're going to come to face one day in the mirror and you're going to look at the mirror and say, ooh, I am a mess. Amen? And when you get to the place where you are a mess, then, you know, the, the men do it. They comb their hair. They look horrible before they comb their hair or before they wash their scalp. I don't know what the case will be. Shave. I hate shaving. I just hate shaving. And if... 
If it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't shave. I'd just get up here on the platform and I'd be the wooliest looking thing you ever seen. My beard would have red whiskers, gray whiskers, yellow whiskers, black whiskers, brown whiskers. I would look like a Christmas tree around my chin, a hairy one. But my wife makes me shave. Because my wife says, no kisses until you get that off your face. Well, I like kisses, so I shave. I don't like to shave. I hate shaving. I don't know about the rest of you. Obviously, some of you don't mind it because you don't shave. But anyway, I don't like shaving. It, it bothers me. It irritates me to have to do. There's things in life I just don't like to do. I eat oatmeal in the morning. I like oatmeal. You know you're getting old when you start loving oatmeal. I like oatmeal. I learned how to eat oatmeal. Are you listening to me? I learned how to eat oatmeal. You put lots of raisins in it. You crumble up some Twinkies in it. You crumble up some chocolate chip cookies in it. You put some marshmallows in it. You put some nuts in it to where it takes more time to find the flake of oatmeal than it does the raisin. Boy, that's good stuff. And I'm, you do know I'm doing that for my health. I went and seen the doctor and the doctor said to me, what are you doing for your cholesterol? I said, I'm eating oatmeal every morning. He said, you are? He said, I'm proud of you. I said, thank you. But I wasn't willing to confess any more information to him. Hello? Life's not easy. I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's full of all kinds of problems. But we need to understand that one day you'll wake up and you'll be old. If you're granted long enough to live that old. One day you'll wake up and you'll be of years and you'll think, where did the time go? And you're going to think, okay, next stop, graveyard. That's scary, isn't it? And of course, there's young people, and the truth is, the Lord could come tonight. Amen? The Lord could come tonight. I turned 69 December the 4th. 69. I put on my Facebook, I am at this moment, today, 900 years younger than the oldest man in the Bible. You know who that is? That's Methuselah. You know how old he was? 969 years old. That makes me 900 years younger than him. Does that make me feel better? No. But it did give somebody a Bible quiz. And it did give a little mathematic problem there. The Lord could come while you're young. You could be taken in death while you're young. The Lord could come in rapture. Well, you're young. Or you may reach the time in life where, you know, you just, you, just, you just sold your life. You just spent your life. And we don't want to spend our life in the hog pen. We don't want to spend our life eating husk that the swine did eat. We don't want to spend our life, we don't want to waste our life with righteous living. We don't want to waste our life with nonsense. We need to understand that God wants you to include him in your life. But you can't just stop and say, woohoo, I'm going to let Jesus on board. That ain't how it works. God has to be good enough to convict you. God has to be good enough to draw you. If you're sitting here saying, well, I kind of like the message, but it's not bugging you at all, I feel sorry for you. If you're sitting in this room right now and you feel no conviction, I'm grieved for you. If you're sitting in this room right now and you don't feel the need of being close to Jesus Christ, I feel sorry for you. Because you cannot be saved until you have that need. You cannot be saved until you have that drawing. That's what Jesus Christ said. No man come to the Father except he which sent me, the Father sent me, draw him. No one can come to me except the Father which sent me, draw him. That's what Jesus Christ said. It's called conviction. Call, call conviction. See, it's not a simple matter. You come in forward shaking my hand and say, well, I, I now receive Jesus as my personal Savior. Listen, it's a little 
a little tougher than that. It, 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 please hear me. You don't go, whoo I received Jesus as my personal Savior and run out and smoke your weed and whatever you do. That ain't how it works. It works. It's a life-changing experience. It's when Christ comes to your life and it is not for a day or a week or a month. It's for a lifetime. Jesus Christ for a lifetime. Amen? Not everybody's saved the same way as far as, you know, mechanics, as far as, you know, what happens in events or days or weather. Not everybody's saved the same way that way, but they are saved the same way. The drawing of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of God's Word, the calling out to Jesus Christ, the repenting of your sin, asking Jesus Christ to forgive you and be merciful to you. And you become a person that's contrite before the presence of God, asking God for forgiveness. It's not a matter. You're not doing God such a wonderful honor by coming to him. God is doing us a such a wonderful honor by giving us the grace and coming to us. Isn't that good? You know, it bothers me. It really bothers me. And, I, and, and you know, um, I just, I need to say that, and please understand where I'm coming from, but it really bothers me when people can come to a little activity like this and we love our children. It's such a blessing, such a glorious thing. And we love our grandbabies. We love our children. And it's just a presence, Lord. But it, it really bothers me. When someone could do that out of, out of, you know, honor and out of respect and out of courtesy to their children and not really have the courtesy to God and say, God, you know, I really need you in my life. I really need you to lead me and guide me and direct me. I need you to be a part of my life because if your life is just making a living, you don't have no life. Life doesn't begin at Walmart. Life doesn't continue at, I'm telling my age, Kmart. It doesn't greet you at the bottom of the blue flashing line, the deal at Kmart. Some of you are sitting there saying, I ain't got a clue what you're talking about because you're younger than I am. But everybody in this room that's older than I am, understands that when you get a little older, if you can save a quarter on a piece of junk, you'll buy it. Hello? It's amazing you get someone a dollar off and boy, they'll fight over it because you get a dollar off, bless God. If your life just consists of shopping or working or just trying to make ends meet, you know, you're doing a great service to your children. You're taking care of them. You're clothing them. You're feeding them. You're blessing them. You're doing a great service. You're, you're a good father, a good mother, a good grandparent. You're, you're showing your love and your care to your family. Family's important. But remember, God's family too. He's the father in heaven. And he wants every wayward son or daughter to return home. God has a family too. And, and we're brothers and sisters if we're Christians. If you're Christian, I'm your brother. You're my sister. We're a family. And we need to understand that life doesn't consist of just, you know, I got to keep that Ford running. Got to keep that Mazda going. I got to keep that Suzuki running. Anybody get on a Suzuki this time in weather like it is today needs to be saved. In fact, you need a brain transplant. Well, I'm tough. I'm not getting on anything in this kind of weather without some covering over my head and some heater going. Because that's just not, I'm just not going to do it to try to prove to you I'm tough. No. I don't prove a thing. Except, you know, you're, you're and, and I understand there's people that they have, that's their only mode of transportation. I understand that. But if someone just out, you know, I've seen a guy on 65 Highway. And if he's watching me by YouTube or television or whatever tonight, you're, you know, you really need to go to a psychiatrist and get checked out. 
I'm, I'm going up 65 Highway. It used to be two lanes, now it's four lanes. In some places it's three lanes. But I'm going home from Springville. I'd been to Golden Crow, rung the bell. It was fun. He said, what do you mean rung the bell? I mean, I filled up big time, Golden Crow. Do you like Golden Crow? And I'm headed home, I'm full, I'm comfy. And I'm headed home and here comes this motorcycle up beside me. And he's, he's really making noise. And when he gets right beside me, he cocks that thing wide open and cools it back on one wheel. And he goes a good two miles down the road on one wheel. He'd go on one wheel about to go back and I'm thinking, oh boy, your biscuits are about to get burned. But he'd get it back up and he'd go one wheel. You don't see 69 year old people doing that. <laughs> Hello? You don't see 50 year old people doing that. They just a young kid. All he had to do, all that motorcycle had to do is get one hiccup and you had been in eternity. Just one hiccup, just one little misfire, and you've been in eternity. Life isn't about taking chances. Life is about being certain that you're ready to go to heaven. Life is about being certain that you're going to serve God. And I thought, surely the guy won't do it again. And we got on down the road a few more miles, and he did it again. One wheel going down the road. He's running 70 mile an hour because I know I'm running 65. You go, whoa, one wheel. And I'm thinking, my goodness, why would anyone take that chance and be that close to eternity? Is, is the boy on the motorcycle a Christian? I don't know. If he is, the father had a talk with him last, that night and said, we need to talk. Right? How many would agree the father would have said to him, we need to talk? And the father probably would have said to him, quit being so stupid. I'm tired of sending extra angels down there to keep you alive. But, you know, there's people out there that do things like that. All it's going to do is get you in jail. All it's going to do is get you in the hospital. All it's going to do is ruin your life. We don't take chances. We need to take Jesus. Don't take chances, take Jesus. Don't take chances of getting old and your children not being nurtured. You know, I, I, the, I see the young people that started coming to this church several, several years ago. We've got a lot of sweet young people and I'm seeing them now, they're, they're, they're fine young men and fine young ladies. And they're talented. You seen that tonight, didn't you? They're talented. Amen? The piano playing. The angel. Remembered her part. So good. Amen. The piano playing. The, that cute little granddaughter of mine that would not sit still. <laughs> that disrupted everything. You know, I really don't care. That's my granddaughter. It's that, you know, I'm not, I got, I, you know, we didn't take an offering tonight because I figured my granddaughter would do that, do that. So I didn't want you to ask for a refund. Serious, sober, you're going to meet God. You're going to stand before God. Don't stand before God without Jesus Christ. Don't go out to meet the Lord just existing in a petty life. Get Jesus on board. So you can shout, be a good cheer. It's all clear. You can shout, be a good cheer. I'm row, row, rowing my boat. God's with me. Be a good cheer. Sometimes I make a mess. But Jesus Christ has overcome the world. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Looks like the party's about over. No, I got to say kids. Okay. One of them sick? Well, in the name of Jesus, we just believe healing for them little squirts. Amen? Lord, heal them in Jesus' name. Praise God. 
I want you to stand with me. We're going to give a, uh, a little time of prayer. And, and uh, I get tickled with these little girls. I call them little squirts. Or, and the boys, too, got a little squirt. And, and they'll be kind of shy. And then they'll come up to me a little later on when I'm not expecting them. They'll say, you're a squirt. And I said, I'm too fat and old to be a squirt. I'm a glob. But let me just have a prayer and I want you to have a prayer today I want you to make a decision today that you're not going to waste your life but you're going to let Jesus you're going to ask Jesus you're going to beg Jesus to let you be a part of his redeeming love you're going to beg Jesus to let you be a part of his all clear be of good cheer all clear you're going to let him be a part of row, row, row in your boat. And Jesus is going to be with you even in the hardest of times. You're going to allow Jesus to give you victory. No matter how messy it gets. It was a mess, but Jesus Christ took it on the cross, rose again from the dead. And today, he's the fix-it man. He's the clean-up God. He's the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. So I want us to pray. Right now, you can pray from your own, your own words, but let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, if you'll have me, I want you. If you will forgive me, I need you. I ask you, Lord, to be merciful to me. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you, Lord, to not just heal my body, but heal me. That I would have the refreshing cup of forgiveness in my life. That I could say it's all clear. Good cheer. That I could invite you, my Lord. That you would help me through the hardest of times. That you would guide me and help me to raise the children, raise my grandchildren, be a part with my grandchildren and family. That you'd help me be an example for you. And God, please forgive me and help me and guide me. And Lord, I understand that any victory that I will share, any victory that I will have, I'll have to share it with your victory because I have none of my own. I have no victory of my own. But I can be a good cheer in this tribulation, in this world of problems. And I can ask you, and I do ask you, Jesus, to give me the best of life. And give me forgiveness of sin. Because I believe that you died on the cross. You rose again from the grave. And today, you are the reason for the season. Today, you are with us. For us. Around us. Helping us. Guiding us. You are with us. And I give you praise and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. That's it. I'm done. God bless you guys. Gather up your beautiful children. Take them home. <laughs> I've got enough of my own. Take them home. Thanks for coming. Beautiful, beautiful play. Talk about the weather, if it'll rain or shine, how cold it's been, your spring's coming on time, but you know there's something I'd rather do, let's talk about Jesus, what he can do for you, help me, let's talk about Jesus. He died for you and me Let's talk about Jesus And how he set us free yeah. Let's talk about Jesus And he forgave our sin yeah. Let's talk about Jesus He's coming back again Amen. We can talk about politics All the whole day long Republicans and Democrats 
know what they're doing wrong. Not a word about the future. But here, here's the thing. Let's talk about Jesus. Cause he's the king of kings. Amen. Let's talk about Jesus. He died for you and me. Yeah. Let's talk about Jesus and how he set us free. Amen. Let's talk about Jesus. He forgave our sin. Let's talk about Jesus. He's coming back again. Play one more. Yeah. We can talk about fishing and how good it feels yep. to land a big old whopper on your fishing reel. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, but nothing compares to what Jesus can do. Yep. If you're fishing with Jesus, you land the whoppers too. Help me sing it. Let's talk about Jesus. He died for you and me. Let's talk about Jesus and how he set us free. Yeah. Let's talk about Jesus and he forgave our sin. Let's talk about Jesus. He's coming back again. One more word. Let's talk about Jesus. He died for you and me. Let's talk about Jesus and how he set us free. Let's talk about Jesus and he forgave our sin. Let's talk about Jesus. He's coming back again. One more time. Let's talk about Jesus. He died for you and me. Let's talk about Jesus and how he set us free. Let's talk about Jesus and he forgave our sin. Let's talk about Jesus. He's coming back again. Let's talk about Jesus. He's coming back again. Amen. Good. Calvary, Calvary, marked with love and suffering, bearing my shame, numbered for me, Jesus, you gave your love for me. There on that cross, your body crushed, bearing your wrath. Look out for us, live in my place, so out of place, the sacrifice, the same was made, and I will sing unto the Lord, do you know when I lift my voice, when you I'm free, yeah I've been free, because your blood will shed for me. for us there in my place it's all out of place to the sacrifice the sin was made Amen. and I will sing unto the Lord do you know when I lift my voice when do I free and I'm complete because your blood was 
said, born in the man, there in the grave, your body lay, yeah. no corruption, no decay, and on that third and glorious day, Jesus arose. Oh 
with you, Lord, at home with you. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Praise God. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have three exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful Bible preaching at every service, and we never close for any reason. In addition, be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of our upcoming events and most current information. We look forward to seeing you soon, right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. If you missed any of today's broadcast, would like to watch it again, or maybe share it with your friends, you can do that easily by heading over to our YouTube channel. Simply go to www.youtube.com forward slash Ozark School Gospel Church. You'll find today's broadcast as well as many other great messages. While you're there, be sure to click that red subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. It's totally free and a great way to stay connected with us.